So we covered some basic um, interactivity. We talked about we have buttons that can do things right now, and we kind of set up a basic layout. Okay. So the next thing we want to look at is more in detail how to lay out the controls. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit more first with the constraint layout, and then you'll also get a brief introduction to the linear layout as well as the relative layout. Okay. So those are the three things we're going to cover in 1.2b. It is more about the constraint layout, the linear, and the relative. So let's start with this. So here's how we have that layout right now. This is what it should still look like. Okay, going back to the regular one. Um, what we want to do, however, is get it to work a little bit better when, say, it's horizontal, right? Because you saw in some screen sizes that zero, the counter gets cut off, right? So we want it set up in such a way that that will be fine. Um, we also notice that if we if we use this on a larger tablet, um, it's not going to work so well, and we'll look at that in a minute. Um, so what we're going to also do is create a version of the layout that works better for tablets. Okay, so that makes sense. So we're going to take this one layout that we have, and we're actually going to create some additional versions of it that it can automatically switch to. Is kind of our first goal. Now, before we get to that, we want to talk about all of the buttons that are actually in Android Studio. So we've talked about some of them. I want to go back and review those and talk about some of the ones we haven't talked about yet. We didn't talk, mention yesterday. Okay. So pulling up Android Studio. Open an existing project. Samples, and I'm going to open up Hello Test. So right now, if we look into the layout folder, You'll see how many layouts do files do I have? I just have one, right? So that one file is getting used for all devices and all um, all different orientations, right? So I'm just using that one layout file, which if I can pull it off, that's usually ideal, right? It it actually saves me more work if I can have fewer layout files, okay? Um, but what we're going to go through right now is what to do when maybe that is an option, okay? So Looking at the toolbar, so I'm going to go back to the design tab. Let's look at what options I have here. So just a reminder here, I can change which versions of the view I'm seeing. Again, the design is kind of good when you're trying to gauge the colors and see the overall view of what it's going to look like in the device. Um, but the blueprint view is really designed to make it clearer so you can see the constraints that you've applied. Um, because they can be a little bit hard to see on the regular design view. So, so that's why that exists. Um, the orientation I can change here. If I pull this down, I can go portrait or landscape. Um, you will see there's a bunch of other options in there, um, and we'll kind of walk through those as we go through today. We'll, we'll see some of those. Um, so we can switch between portrait and landscape. Um, you can also you also have the second this other drop down here, which can change what kind of device you're previewing it on, right? So you may want to see what does it look like in different screen sizes. Um, so there's a bunch of standard tablets if I look up at the top here, and there's also a bunch of standard phones and tablets. The first number you see here is the the size of the screen, and that's what we talk about the diagonal size. Um, so if we're looking at a five inch tablet. Or sorry, five inch phone. What we're saying is that this across, that's five inches. That diagonal, that's the measurement that you're seeing there. 
Okay, so note that that being five inches, you've got two of these that are five inches, but they may not, may not be the same. Does that make sense? So the five, that measurement is just that, that diagonal measurement, but that can be a lot of difference. So it could be taller, thinner? Be taller, thinner, could be more square. Um, but it gives you kind of a general size class of is this a smaller device or a bigger device. Okay. Um, so five is that top one. Um, we may want to go down to four. Um, the fours, let's say I go to generic. There's a there's this menu all the way down at the bottom, which is generic. So you've got all the like Google devices up at the top. But we also may want to go generic and for other manufacturers and such. So these are kind of standard sizes. Okay. So in here we've got one that's four inches. So I'm going to go down to four inches. You can see it's 480 by 800. And we can see what it looks like there. So there's our Nexus S actually. It's switched it over to. Does that make sense? Um, so that's a good one to look at, at there. And I can also switch that over here, kind of see what's happening there. It mostly works, but one thing I notice for sure is it looks like the zero is not centered. You see that? The zero is not centered. And part of that has to do with what we've set the font size to, okay, is why it's not perfectly centered. Um, let's also look at some of the other devices that are there. So in there, you've also got standard tablets. So like, let's say we wanted to go to a 7-inch tablet. We can pick that here. And see that in both orientations, or we could go all the way up to a 10-inch tablet, right? So I go all the way up to the 10-inch tablet, and I think you can see some of the issues that are happening. So first of all, the text is just way too small, right? And I'm not really maybe using making effective use of the space that's available, right? So I have one button here, and then another button all the way over there. Right, so that's not going to necessarily be a good user interface. I can look at it landscape too. Again, it kind of stretches, but it's not necessarily ideal. Does that make sense? So just like we did with Bootstrap, you always want to design from the smallest device up. Okay, does that make sense? Your first design should always be what works on the smallest screen possible. Right. So for that, what I would suggest is start with that four-inch tablet and then go up to the 7 and then go up to the 10. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So start with the small and work your way up. But you want to start with the small, but you also in that process need to check does it work in both orientations. Now, other options you'll see in there, so you've got the Nexus devices and you can go to generic devices. You see these three options that I've got for virtual devices? So I can actually preview it on all the emulators I've already set up. So if I've already picked, I'm going to be testing against that. Well, I can just pick those three sample devices that I've that I've chosen and get a quick preview on that. So that's that's another upside of creating those those emulators, and then you can quickly go to those screen sizes. Does that make sense? Okay, so we can preview it with different screen sizes, different orientations. Um, we can also preview it on different versions of Android. Um, now, that may not seem like something that's a big deal. Um, and, and most of the times, the differences between different versions of Android is pretty, is pretty minor. Now, the big reason, that, the big place where you're going to see the differences, if I'm just left it like this, it doesn't seem like anything's happened, right? One thing you want to do if you're changing the version of Android, make sure you're showing the layout decorations because that's the thing that's going to change. So let me go back down to a smaller device. And that's usually the part that switches. Why am I? Why is it picking back up at that one? 10.1. Yeah. OK. So for here, we're not seeing any changes. Um, but usually that's the thing you're going to watch is bars down here, bars down there. Those are the kind of things that will usually change, if anything. Um, the other reason why that matters is, is, is sometimes you'll want to create different versions of a layout depending on what version of Android it's running on. So just like we can create variants, which you'll see in a minute, based on 
here's one variant for portrait, here's one variant for landscape, I can say use this version for old devices and use this version for newer devices. Um, so that's one of the reasons why it's there. Um, but automatically it'll be just the latest version. So for me it's picking 29. Um, also below here there's a second kind of toolbar. Okay. Um, although there should be, there we go, so there's some more options there. So you can also change what theme it looks like. So for instance, what theme it's running on, we go back to a four inch device. Um, so right now it's just running on the default theme. I can also change it to, for instance, no action bar, and you can see what's happened, right? So there's a few different themes that change how things look. So for instance, that no action bar is without that part that shows up top. You see that's the name of the application. So you can preview it that way. Um, There's a few different ways you can look at that. So as we get into playing with themes, especially, you may want to look like, look at that if your if your app can be in, in more than one theme. So for instance, a lot of the Google apps nowadays have a like a dark theme and a light theme, right? Um, including like YouTube has a has a dark theme and a light theme. Um, so that's one way you one thing you may need to look at. Um, there's also another option here for the language. Um, so by default, it's just going to be in English. Um, but if we if you go into translations, and you may need to see what it looks like in a different language. Um, there's also an option in here to view it in right to left. Um, anybody know why that might be interesting? I believe some languages like Japanese are mm -hmm. right to left. Yeah, Hebrew is a common instance of that too. So um, what that means is if we preview it from right to left, a lot of these things will flip backwards. So usually the kind of expectation is, let's say I've got these series of buttons horizontal, button A, B, C. If I flip it right to left, it will actually switch the order of the buttons. So it would be A, B, C. Um, so that's why you may want to look at the how the orient how the layout looks in right to left. Because it's not just the text that switches, but it's often the order of the buttons. Okay. Um, then down below here, we've got um, a few checkboxes for what we're going to view. We've kind of looked at some of those already. Um, so if I uncheck, let me go to the blueprint view. If I uncheck show all constraints, that means, hey, I'm only going to show the constraints for the control I've activated. Um, oftentimes, it's worth seeing all of them, so I usually leave that checked. Um, also, if I, zoom, if I zoom in here a little bit, you can kind of see the margins that are on the, the different sides. Um, if I go to unshow, not show margins, you won't see those numbers there. Um, it's usually helpful to see those, especially because you want to look for things where that margin is a high number. Right. So if you see a margin that's 100 pixels or bigger, yeah, it's probably a problem because that's going to create that's going to be an issue when you go to a different device. Because the thing you need to understand with margins is it's always the same measurement regardless of what the size of the device is. That's not something that scales. Um, so you want to make sure those aren't big fixed numbers. Um, also, we could say fade unselected views. And we can kind of see that's going to make, uh, actually, let me go back to the design view. I think that, no, I can't remember what that exactly does. Um, so live rendering. Live rendering is more of a big deal when you're making your own controls. Um, so you may want to have animations and things like that to see what happens if you're actually running your code. Um, but that's also one thing. If you're writing your own, if you're writing your own controls, sometimes things crash. So if you have live rendering on, that may be that you can't actually get into the designer because your control isn't working. Um, so if you have an issue like that where you're building your own control, it's crashing, you may need to uncheck that so you can still work with the layout even though the control is busted. Um, and then layout decorations, as we've seen previously, is the part that are kind of part of the operating systems. So you've got the, the bar of, of software buttons on the bottom, Why did it not? So 
you got software buttons at the bottom and kind of the status bar on the top and things like that. So, so it's often helpful to see those things as well. Okay. Next thing we have, we talked about auto connect and, and just a reminder about auto connect. What that does is if it's turned on when it looks like this, it looks like a little magnet that's going to automatically try and guess what your, what your constraints should be as you drag things on. Again, I really would recommend leaving that off. Um, because most of the time it doesn't get it right. Um, the big thing here on this, this one's really important to remember. It's going to default to zero. Please make sure anytime you do anything, default it to eight. Eight is a good starting point for, for most things. Um, there's another button here. Remember what this one does? Removes all the constraints. So this is going to remove all the constraints from every, every single widget in your layout. Right? You only do that if you want to say, okay, well, we need to completely redo all the constraints. If you only want to do it on one control by itself, you can right-click that control specifically and say clear constraints for the selection. So that way you're only removing constraints for the one thing. Okay, That's an important thing to remember. Um, there's also a little button here that looks like a magic wand. And what that's going to do, that's usually once you've kind of cleared all the constraints. You say click that button and it's going to guess where all the constraints should be. Again, just like Auto Connect, it isn't always all that accurate, so there's usually things you have to fix after it's done that. Um, so sometimes it can save you some time, but most of the time it, it, it's not too much of a time saving, to be honest. Um, there's this option in here as well. You'll see add vertical guideline as horizontal guideline. Vertical barriers and horizontal barriers, grouping. Grouping is kind of a way to group controls together. Um, these vertical guidelines and horizontal guidelines can be kind of interesting. So let's say I want to add a vertical guideline here. And see this kind of dashed line that it's put in there? That gives me a way to kind of split things up. So let's say I want to have a, a right side column that's uh, where is it? So I want to set that to 100 pixel, 100 dp. I can have kind of a sidebar that way, right? And say put things in between there. The nice so guidelines are not they're not actually visually shown when you run it on the application. They're simply there to help you align controls because you can put constraints to them. Um, there's three different set three different modes that these vertical and horizontal guidelines can be in. So they can either be in pixels, an absolute number. So like here it's 100%, I mean 100, 100 dp. I can also change it to, for instance, percentages. So let's say I want to have that in percentage. I can click a little drop here, switches it to 311 from the right. And then if I go to the percent, oh, now it's at 24%. So I can say I want this to be 50%. That's not what I wanted to do. 50%. So then I could align things to that guideline, and I know they'll be evenly dividing the two sides of the screen, or top and bottom of the screen. So those things can be very helpful for, for certain kinds of layouts. Um, barriers are very similar to guidelines, um, but they have some odd behaviors. I'm not going to go into what they are right now. Um, they are similar, but again, they, they behave kind of similar to guidelines. The difference is that they're kind of automatically pick how big they are uh, based on the controls that they're bounded to. Um, but I would generally avoid staying away from those, at least for now. Um, and just using guidelines should you need them. Okay, so that, I think that touches all of those buttons that are on those two toolbars. Any questions on that? Um, so let's go to looking at this on a 4-inch device, and then let's look at it in landscape mode. Okay, so on that 4-inch phone, especially important thing to see here is I've also got the layout, de the decorations on there. If I turn off the decorations, it looks like it fits perfectly, right? So that's an important thing to, to pay attention to is, is sometimes it looks fine just by itself, 
but because the additional decorations that have to be there, maybe there's less space than it would seem at first. So at, on this device, we can see that we don't have enough space for the text in a landscape orientation. See that? Okay. So what I want to do is create a separate layout for the horizontal. Okay. There are other ways to do this. This is not the only way to change things so it looks different on horizontal, um, but this is one of the methods you can use. Okay. Um, so under the orientation button, there's an option here that says create a landscape variation. So I'm going to cl click that. Okay. And what it's done is it's created a copy of that layout. So now I can use that copy and that copy is going to be specific to landscape. So if I go back and look at my resource folder, you'll see now that I have two files. See this? So they're both called activity main. Okay. First one doesn't have any sort of parentheses after it, right? When you see that, that is the default file. So by default, it will use that first one. You see that? The other one has this little land at the end. Okay. So that's telling me that this version is going to be used in landscape mode, right? So this one's used in portrait. That one's used in landscape. Okay. Now I can switch between those two easily if I have one of them open. I'm going to go back to the orientation view and watch how the buttons have changed. So you see if I'm in landscape, it says open portrait. There's this little arrow and it points to another file. And you can see, so as I'm changing orientation now, it's skipping, it's jumping back and forth between two different files. So does that make sense? So that allows me to have one completely different layout file for landscape than I have for portrait. Okay. Um, but at the moment, if I look at the text of both of these, I'll see that their text is exactly identical. Now, an important part of that, them being exactly identical right now, is that their IDs are the same. Right? So this is button toast, this is button count, that's show count, right? All the controls have the same IDs. Um, and in fact, these two layouts will automatically be switched without the Java code noting anything about it, which is really important, right? So your Java code should have no idea which variant of the layout you're actually using. Does that make sense? So we can divorce our, our business logic, which is in our activity, from our view. Right, the way we way we show it doesn't have to be directly tied to how we how we deal with the user input. Okay, so in the layout in the landscape version, what I'm going to do to make this work a little bit better is I'm going to go down to where we have the text size. Okay, so you can see that set to 160 SP. Everybody got that? What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this all the way down to 80 SP. Okay. So that way in portrait, that will be 160 SP. In landscape, it will be 80 SP. And as you can see, that brings the font size down low enough that it works. Okay. So, so just making that one change, let's go and try to run it on a on-the-phone emulator. And just verify that this has actually fixed the problem. Okay. So there I have it in portrait, no change. If I switch it over to landscape, you'll see now it works. And then the text is getting cut off and it's in the center. Um, the guide here did suggest doing it at 120 SP, um, but I did find with the four inch, four inch phone it was still too big. So that's why I went all the way down to 80, because 80 was what seems to work reliably for the four inch phone. Okay. So does that make sense? Um, now, this is not terribly efficient in this case because the only thing I'm changing is the font size, right? So, but I'm still having to make an entire copy of the layout, right? So, so there are better tools than this for a situation here. Um, but what I want you to see is that you can do it, right? So you can have one layout for landscape, one layout for portrait. 
Okay. Now, let's try to run this. I'm going to switch over to my 10 inch tablet. And let's look at what it looks like in that emulator. So on a 10 inch tablet, that's what we have, right? So there it is in landscape. There it is in portrait. Not really ideal, okay? So what I, what I want to do is I want to increase the font size for that, for the tablet as well as I want to be able to move the buttons around. Does that make sense? So they're all kind of in one place. So rather than having them being opposite sides, which looks fine on a phone, maybe I want to have them together so they're physically closer. Okay. So what can I do with that? So when I have either of these ones open, I'm going to go back to the Design tab. Okay. So I'm looking at the Portrait one. What I'm going to go down here, let's see. So under here, we remember we went here to create that landscape version, right? So you said create landscape version variation. Here I'm going to now go and I'm going to create a tablet variation, okay? So I'm going to say create tablet variation. Again, that's going to create another layout file. And just like previously, this is a copy of the layout file that I was just on, right? So I can look at that one and I can see, hey, the, the font size there is still 160 SP. Nothing's changed. Let's go look at what files I actually have right now. So under resources again, you'll see now I have three versions, right? So I have the portrait version, I have the landscape version, and then I have this third version, which is going to get used for tablets. Okay. Now look at what that suffix is. What does it show in parentheses there? SW600DP. See that? Um, so what that's saying, SW600DP. SW is short for smallest width. So if I have a tablet and it is 600 by 800, which of those two is the smallest dimensions? Well, it's a 600, right? So it would get applied to this kind of tablet, right? Six, if it's 600 pixels by 800 pixels, it gets applied. But if I had one that was, say, um, it's still 600, but the other dimension is 400, right? The smallest dimension now is 400. So it wouldn't get applied to this tablet. Does that make sense? Okay, so as long as the smallest dimension is 600 or bigger, we're going to apply this tablet instead. And in fact, this, this layout's going to get applied whether it's portrait or landscape, which we'll see in a minute. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so what I want to do, now that I've got this ta tablet variation, is I want to move the buttons around. Okay, so right now all of the, all the buttons are constrained. So what I'm going to do first is get rid of all the constraints. Uh, let me actually switch over to blueprint mode for this. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear all the constraints. Okay, so now there are no constraints. And if I look at any of these controls, you can see that there is a little exclamation mark on it because there's no vertical or horizontal constraint on any of these. Okay, all cool. Now, what I want to do is get both of these buttons up to the top of the view and kind of have them evenly spaced. Okay, so I'm going to size down the text view a little bit. I'm going to move these things around. I'm going to size down all the controls for a brief moment. Size those down. So now because there's cons no constraints, it's fairly easy to move these things around. Okay. So I'm going to put 
toast count and zero kind of started out like that okay now remember because i've resized these it's given all three of these controls fixed dimensions right so i'll need to fix i'll need to change that in a moment because otherwise i'm going to have a problem now before i do that let me switch this real quick over to landscape you can kind of see where things are at so i'm going to look at this in landscape for right now because i want to show you one thing um so assuming i'm using this in landscape um i need to now add the constraints back um, but before i add the constraints back i'm going to change this to 16 dp okay um good rule of thumb um when you're working with phones 8 dp is pro is is usually pretty much ideal for margins um, but when you're dealing with a tablet it's usually better to have a 16 dp margin does that make sense that just how things work out physically it ends up usually being more user friendly to have a 16 dp margin on a tablet and an 8 dp margin on a phone okay so i've got this set to 16 i'm going to connect these things up so the first one i'm going to connect to the top and the left okay now i'm going to do something a little bit interesting here with the second button okay i could just connect it like so right connect it to the top connect it to the left that would all be fine okay um but what i'm actually going to do i'm going to move that constraint real quick what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to use a different kind of constraint that you haven't seen yet just so you can get some exposure to it um, so what i want to add is a baseline constraint now where it used to be it's changed since this tutorial was written okay it used to be that i could hover over it and it would show up down here at the bottom okay the way you get to a baseline constraint nowadays is you right click on it and i'm going to say show baseline okay so now you see that's made this little bar show up that's my anchor for a baseline constraint so just like i would go with one of the sides and, and link it to another control i'm going to click on here drag over there and now those two buttons are connected with a baseline constraint okay now a baseline constraint says align the baseline of the text between the two controls okay now remember yesterday i mentioned that every control needs to have a vertical constraint and a horizontal constraint right okay so if i'm looking at constraints okay these two on the left and right that's horizontal these two are vertical okay i don't have to have both sides if i i only have to have either top or bottom left or right okay i only have to have two of those i only have to have one of the horizontals and one of the verticals right if i add a second one then i'm going to be doing one of two things either i'm trying to stretch it to fit the whole space or i'm going to probably or more likely i'm trying to send or or maybe trying to center it okay so if you want to center it in the view or you want to stretch it to the full width that's where you're going to use both sides does that make sense okay now a baseline constraint with how it looks baseline constraint always can is between two controls is it vertical or horizontal it is both no vertical it's vertical why is it vertical somebody else okay go for it um why is it aligning the the text that's within the um the two controls on the horizontal axis like horizontally it's lining them up it's lining I mean, them yeah so they're in the same so they're so yes, they're horizontally each other but that really means that it's aligning them vertical and that's right. an easy that's a thing that a lot of trips a lot of people up is a baseline constraint is a vertical constraint it looks like a horizontal constraint and a lot of people get that confused it looks like it should do something horizontally it doesn't affect the horizontal okay so for instance if i move this around 
I can freely move this left and right. That has no effect. Uh, also, notice it removed the top and bottom constraint option. It did, because as soon as I put it on a baseline constraint, I can't put a top and bottom constraint because they would conflict. Does that make sense? If I had a top constraint and a baseline constraint, it can't be both, right? It has to either be constrained to the baseline or has to be constrained vertically some other way. Okay, so if you add a baseline constraint, you're constraining those the two bottoms of the text to be lined up with each other. Okay, I still need to add, as it shows over here, I still need to add a horizontal constraint, right? So that horizontal constraint can be on either side. I could either constrain that button like that, so it would be fixed to the right side of the screen, or let me remove that constraint. I could fix it to the left side of the other button. See that? But I need both of those two constraints. I can't go with just one or the other. I can't just use the baseline constraint because it doesn't constrain it horizontally. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, the baseline constraint is generally not something I would recommend you use for buttons. Okay. In this example, we're going to use it for buttons, but I generally would not recommend you use it for buttons. Okay, um, because it's usually better to use your top left and other such constraints in those cases. The case where this baseline constraint really shines is let's say I take a text view here. I'm going to drag that in and let's actually go to a smaller screen so this is easier to see. Oh. Nope, I have to be on my I have to be on my tablet version. Okay. So let me just zoom in then. Okay. So I'm gonna put a little text view in here. Which remember that's that's fixed text. It's like a label. I'm also gonna to go to text here and I'm gonna put in a which one do I want? Let's say I put a password, an email field in here. So I want a label here that's going to say email and a place for the user to type in email. Drag to design view. That kind of looks like that. You got your label and you've got your text field. Now what you can see, notice what the height of that label is. See? Versus the height of that edit text. They're not really the same height. So if I tried to align them using the normal vertical constraints, align it to the bottom or the top of something, they're not going to line up very well. Right. So oftentimes with these text fields, that's where we're going to use a baseline alignment so that the text text field is lined up with its label. Does that make sense? That's where you're really going to see these baseline constraints is when we're fixing a field with its label. Cool. delete those. Okay, back to Blueprint View. Okay, and then you can kind of see if I've got a baseline constraint, it's going to have that squiggly line. Okay, everything else is straight lines. All right, so notice that these two buttons are different sizes. Remember why that was? Why are those buttons different heights? We resized them. We resized them earlier, right? So I want to go back into the buttons, and let me actually highlight both of them. So I'm going to hold down the control key and pick both of them so I can set their height and width at the same time. I'm going to change both of their widths to wrap content and their heights to wrap content. So what that's going to do is that means that they're going to only take up as much space as they need. Right. So rather than giving them fixed width and heights, I'm going to say, just take up how much space you need. OK, so that's that for the buttons. OK, I also need to add some constraints for the label. So I'm going to line that up with here, link that down to the bottom. And then finally, I'm going to link the top of this with the bottom of the toast button. Note that I'm not linking it up with the top of the screen. 
right? Why am I not linking the top of this up with the top of the screen? Don't really want to position it relative to the entire screen, just to the top. Okay, let me let me sh let's do something real quick. So, so let's say I I were to line it to the top of the screen, okay? Because this is this is a, a kind of a beginner mistake a lot of people make. Um, so I want to go set these to match constraints, kind of like we showed yesterday. So now I've expanded it to the full width of the page. See that? Yeah. Now something's happening. You see how this has overlapped my buttons, right? See how this overlapped my buttons? Let me go back to the design view. So it looks here, is it in front of or behind the buttons? Behind. It's behind, okay? Note that I've got the three controls up here. Watch what happens if I move it up to a different order. Well, actually in that case it didn't change. Um, but it can. When you actually run it, it may depend on the order that's there. Um, so I don't want that really to overlap. Okay. Now, the beginner mistake that a lot of people make is they'll take this and they'll drag it down, or they'll increase the margins. So if I say my top margin is 100, that looks like it's fixed the problem, right? At least in the designer, right? Problem is, that's going to be a problem as far as scaling, right? Because I'm assuming this is always 100, right? What happens if the size of my toast and count buttons change? What happens if I'm translating this into Spanish and they take up a lot more, their words are a lot longer, right? So I really want to avoid solving problems that way. Does that make sense? Because otherwise I'm going to have issues with when I go to changing the size, the, either the font sizes of these buttons or the text that's inside of them, because they could change. Okay, so I'm going to remove that. We're going to link it to the bottom of the toast button. Does everybody follow there? So the label, this text view, is constrained to the bottom of the toast button. Essen, you were shaking your head. So make sure you pick, so text view, see how I've changed the width and height. They should go down to zero dp. You want to click these buttons here and cycle it until you get those squiggly lines like I got, those jagged lines. That's what's going to change it. You have to change, have the width and the height. So that zero dp says expand it to all the available space. Okay, so now that I've made those changes, um, I do want to make a few changes to the font sizes, okay? So first of all, I'm going to go to the two buttons. I'm going to select both of those. Uh, where is it? There we go. I want to select those two buttons. So you can see I've got them highlighted here. We want to change their font size up to 60 SP. So only on tablets, remember this layout is only for tablets, I'm going to push them up to 60 SP so that they have a bigger font size, they're more readable. Does that make sense? If I go back and look at the regular ones, you'll see that these are still the same size. The ones that I'm using for the phone are still 14 SP. But on the tablet, it's gone up to bigger. Okay. I might want to give them some padding, right? So, so where would I find that setting? Note that it doesn't show up here on the top, right? So I may want to give those buttons some padding. I need to scroll down here. Do 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 padding. So I can set different padding on, on, on each side, um, but really I want to set the same padding in this case 
to all through all four sides okay so we send them to 60 sp maybe let's try 10 sp for all sides what about 20. There we go. Now you can see as I change that padding, notice that the size of this label in the center changes. And again, that's because we've constrained it to the bottom of the button instead of constraining it to the top of the key. All good. So I've increased the font size of that. So 60. I set those to 60 and a padding of, of 20. I already put like a ten at the beginning. Or, or you only have one of them selected. You uh, select like a, right. and it looks like you're missing a constraint because one of those has a, an extra mission on it. Oh, uh, so make sure that you have the two buttons selected, mm -hmm. like so, and then you want to go select it. So okay. Okay. Now let's look at where you've got this. So where are you constrained? Oh, you here. You see, you still have six fifty. You oh, I didn't change them to the match constraint. Okay, no, oh, it true. needs to be rack context. So the width and height of both of the buttons needs to be rack context. For height and width. I know, but it has the 10.1 tablet software on five, so that's like move that one to a 7.1, it should be the same way. See how big the is in the front of the front of the
what am I saying? Mm -hmm. And you should be on the counter. Does that make sense? The reason we're training this in the lab is we want to go there. So what we are reviewing is the safety of the results. We want to go back to the important areas so that we can go through that time. So I have a version of my plan. Um, so, one more thing in here. Um, for the label, um, I want to increase the font size on that one as well. So I'm going to select that one by itself. And so for tablets, we're going to push this up to 200 SP. That should be good. Now, if I run this on a 10 inch tablet, as is, again, the last thing I changed is 200 SP. I'm going to run this in the, into a tablet. Where's my VM? There's my VM. Okay, so there's my 10 inch tablet. Okay, so everything, everything kind of works now, right? All the font sizes are, are, are big and readable. I've got these buttons together. That's nice and efficient. Now what happens, what happens if I say I want these two buttons to take up half of the space? What if I say I want to make them a little bit bigger, right? Because I'm kind of wasting a bunch of space here. You see that? See that? I'm wasting all that space up there, right? So let's say I want to expand those two buttons to fill the full width, okay? If I select the two, so notice on the bottom left, can I get everybody's attention? Notice how I've selected the both, of, both of those two buttons, right? Okay. Now, once I've selected those two buttons, there's a special button that shows up that I can use. You see this pack button, okay? Um, of note, if I right click them and go to pack, I'm going to see one set of options. See organize, I've only got four options here. If I go to this drop down, notice I'm actually seeing six options, right? So there's actually more options in this version. The, the right click and this drop down on the toolbar are not exactly the same. Okay, so what I'm going to say is pack horizontally from this drop down. And did it work? Maybe not. It worked the other day. Pack horizontally. I may need to do distribute. No. Okay. I think what I'm missing is I have to just add a constraint here. There we go. So now I've got a constraint from the right side of this, the edge. I think that's what I had to do to make this work. So pack horizontally. Distribute large.
It was working yesterday, so what did I... Oh, it's expand horizontally is what I'm looking for. There we go. Expand horizontally. I knew I was missing something. Okay. So you'll notice how it's kind of broadened them. Although you already notice that it maybe made an error, right? So what that does is it kind of tries to make those two items the same width. So it's assigned them a fixed width. See this one that's assigned 616, that one's it's assigned 616. Now one of the problems with this setting is it doesn't always work so well depending on your orientation, right? So if I flip this into portrait, now that's a problem. So one of the things that you want to make sure that you do, if you do use this setting, um, make sure that you always are in the, the shortest side, which is probably going to be, in this case, would be always portrait. I'm going to make sure that it's in the shortest dimension. So let's go expand horizontally again. There, that's this way. Let me remove that constraint. Oh, that's what's happened. This margin's gone up to 8, up to a bunch. There we go. So if I do that, expand horizontally. All right, now it's good on portrait. That's how it's going to look in, in landscape. Okay, so it, it's stretch it so it looks as big as it can be in one dimension but it's still not automatically kind of resizing them if I change orientations. Does that make sense? Did you still have that right constraint on the count? I removed it. Okay. Yeah, I removed it. Yeah, so let's take a break. Um, come back at 2. If you are at the, it, but only if you're at the same place where I'm at. Um, if, you're, if you're a little bit behind and you need to catch up before we before you take break. How do you remember this one? So hover over it. This one. See that says? Uh, so hover control C. In that box.
got no comparison to the zone. We don't want to bring it all the way over to the left of the end because that zone is where it gets rid of probably. So we put it there, and we're going to run this the way out. Oh, do you want to run it? Okay. So we're going to force that way out. That's where we started from this place, right? We had this thing. And that's the one that we're looking at in that small device is the way to connect to that. And what is the third one, right? So we actually should have three here, right? So the first was the default, and then we had a landscape version, which would say was here. So we have a regular fortress. We have the landscape, and then we have the package. Does that make sense? Yeah. So on, on phones, you have this one here, this one, and that one. On tablets, it's always going to be the tablet. Yeah, I just want to see what's going on. And now our, our, our activity still doesn't know anything about the fact that there's three things. Remember F key for quantizing. Okay, so look at which file you have open. Yeah. What file do you have open? Yeah. I don't know wow. which version of it is it. Um, it's the normal version, right? So this is the normal version of the layout. We've got the tablet version layout, and we've got the landscape version. Layout. Are you real clear about which version you're working with? So you want to make, pay attention as you're making changes. Watch which version you're working with. You know, be very careful about that. So it's a regular one. That's where we want to. That just started with one two. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are your constraints here? Since you're missing all these constraints. Yeah. Okay. So why don't you add your constraints back in? Problem. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What are the margins of success for zero? Zero, right? So we want to just put two constraints in there. Okay. So before you go connecting all these constraints, set your default margin. Yeah, right? Make sure. 
to the King's Valley for you to A4, A5, and that's your default, right? Oh, so that's your default. So now we can start looking at some things. So we have like this six bit part of the page. So when the green is in brown, from the green to where you copy, the right will pop. So one important thing you want to do before you go to all of that is your sound key. Right? Because otherwise you can't do the keys where both the list of rules are stuck in text. This will look completely off the screen. Right? So let's go look at this on a bigger tablet so we can work through that. So we move it then to a place where we can see them before we hook up all these features. The direction that your constraints go is extremely important. Okay. Don't look at that constraint going that way. Okay. So we'll go with the other So where do I want that button? Hold up. Where do I want that button relative to this page? Whatever top that you have. Remember, you don't have to put a constraint on both sides. Right? So this constraint here is not going to be connected. Mm -hmm. That one will not be connected. Okay. If you do, you will get problems. Uh, because as soon as I connect this one down here, it's not going to be, the height of it's not going to be controlled by the height of the text, which is what we need. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. So we're only connecting those two sides. This one where we need it, and then on the bottom of the screen. Okay, that's good, right? Mm -hmm. Now this one. Again, it's important the direction that goes. So these, that's connecting to this. Mm -hmm. right? So you kind of work from the outside looking. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's important. So you see how this is going? Yeah. The reason that the direction is going to be in that direction mm -hmm. is because I want this control in the middle is the thing that changes size. Mm -hmm. Right? I want the buttons at the top and bottom to be effectively fixed size. If I do it in the wrong direction, right, then I'm making this in the middle a fixed size instead of the button. That make sense? Mm -hmm. So the direction that you make the constraints in matters a lot in every way. Okay, so don't just go around looking and say, click, 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 connect all of them from top to bottom and then work from the outside. No, it's right. But notice which direction it's going, right? It's not going from it's not going from this one down, that one up, right? So let's go here now. Look at what your margins are. So click them all there. What's your margin on the bottom? Okay, so we've got a little margin. Okay. All right, so we need to now change it so it spans these pages a bit. Right? How do we do that? Easy way to do that. See these bars here? Yeah. All these areas change those. So you see that expand to what's available. Mm -hmm. Match constraints, draft content. Okay. So we want to get them to go to. Okay. 
and this guy requires the other one. Mm -hmm. That's what right? Now, similar thing with these two buttons, we're going to use their side of the tree. So now you can see your class bar, it checks. Okay, that one is out in the vertical. Keep going. See how it collapsed, okay? So you see, we want to, oops, go back. So in the vertical, we want it to be wrapped on there. Because we want it to take up the amount of space it needs for the attachment. Okay? Mm -hmm. right? We don't want to give it a fixed size because then it will allow it to expand and contract as the size of the attachment increases. And we don't really do a mass constraint because, again, it's sort of we want to reserve space for it. Okay? So you see, we, these are mass constraints on the left and right because we're expanding it here um, horizontally, but on the top, they wrap on there. So we've got wrap content for the height, but mass reserve that. This one in the middle that we want to expand both ways is mass constrained in both directions. Okay. What we want as much as we can possibly. As much as we can, we usually want to do on the other side of things. So the wrap function is the mass constraint. So mass constraint if you want to expand, wrap content if you want to do a small mass constraint. Okay. So, okay, so we need to do one thing real quick. The landscape's still broken. Okay. So go to the landscape. Where is that? This one set to that one's the AOC, so now go to the landscape version of the connector. Two points. Why do we have two different sizes? No. Why do we why do we have two different sizes? One is for portrait, and one is for landscape. Mm -hmm. So can you switch it? No. So sure, because this one is specifically for landscape. Mm -hmm. So how would you how would you give that button into a second size? Because you have a shape. Oh no. Go back to so you know it's off screen. Go read and go find it. Now, maybe if you make it too big, then you're going to end up in the cavity. Okay. So let's try it still in phone range. So if we go back, yeah, there we go. So when there's not constraints, you'll see if you look at the text here, you see where the, the wireframe comes in. So if you change that to 4 inches, then you go there and see under the There it is. On the bottom. So rather than changing the layout here, Orientation, where you like. Okay. 
that's my landscape version. Um, my plan tomorrow, so there's there's some more theory stuff that we kind of want to, I hope, my hope is to get through 1-4 today, get to the end of 1-4 today. Um, and assuming we do, we'll then do some all lecture or some theory tomorrow, because there's some additional theory um, that we can need to go back and touch in on. Next something about the break, I need to Yeah. Yeah. You haven't missed anything. So, yeah, I was on a different view. Um, so, one minor thing here. Um, remember, we split it evenly, but notice as I turn it that way, it's not necessarily taking up all the space. So, there is another option in here. Let me highlight these two things. Highlight that button. Highlight that button. So I've got those two buttons highlighted. I'm going to actually go back to the blueprint view here. Um, so if I go into here, remember what we did? We expanded horizontally. Okay, you see that? Um, there's another option if I go into alignment over here. I can align them horizontally. Okay, let's watch what happens when I do that. Now let's move them over. Okay, so they're still fixed size. For me, they're still fixed to 376. Um, but if I go to portrait, you can see it kind of expands. Actually, I may need to set these down to 300 dp to make this work properly. There we go. So we can see they're always 300 dp, but now they're kind of centered. Okay. Um, one thing that this has now done, notice that the symbols are different, right? So you can kind of see this symbol over here, the squiggly line. I'm kind of used to that for a constraint. Same thing here, there's a, a squiggly line. But you see what's in the middle. See, there's a different symbol in the middle, okay? That's actually a chain, okay? And we're not going to cover chains in this chapter. Um, but do know that they're kind of an important thing to know about when we're dealing with rows of items. Okay, so we'll, we're not going to touch on chains this chapter. Um, hopefully we'll come back to them at a later point in time. But that's what's happening there, is, is using something called a chain. And it's automatically set that up. So anytime you need to have something centered in that way, you can go there and say, say center, use the alignment tool. Questions? Okay. All right. Let me go 
back over here and let's see where we're at. So is doing horizontally automatically add a, a right constraint or a left constraint? It did it. end up adding that extra constraint, yeah, that it needed. It figured out that it, that was necessary. Um, so now we're now at the next coding challenge. So there's that's kind of embedded into here. Oh, well, we just did that. So that's that's how you do that coding challenge right there. Is they talk about how do you want to center it, um, and it's simply just go click that button. Okay. Now, if you would. Please take everything that you have at this point and go ahead and check it into version control. Because what we're about to do is we're about to basically break the whole thing. Uh -huh. So let me see, and that, that may not be necessarily an issue. Let me see if I go commit. It's probably going to tell me some. Um, lesson 1.2b. Layout variance commit. So for me, it didn't complain. Thank you. 
Let me remind you that you know what other stuff on the wall right now. Okay. Um, just give me a bit of a Get that part of it. No, I can't do it. Thank you. Just going to keep scrambling. Oh, okay. One of your dimensions is what? Okay. Anywhere in here we've got a measuring point. No, we don't get into the So please, if you would, go back to the original layout, back to just the base portrait layout, and this is where we're going to stay here for the remainder of 1.2b. Um, we're not going to leave this, we're going to leave the, the temp, we're going to leave the tablet layout alone entirely, as well as our landscape layout alone. Okay, so please make sure you stay in this particular layout. Okay. So, what we're going to do now, we've learned how to use the constraint layout. Okay, there's other kinds of layout that exist in the Android system. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to use two other types of layout. First, we're going to go through how would we do this with a linear layout, and then we're going to go through how to do with this with a relative layout. Okay, so a linear layout is the most simple version of a layout that you can come you can come up with. Well, probably the second most complicated version of the layout that you can have in Android. So let's go through what some of these are. So. The first one, which we're not touching right now, is something called a frame layout. So in a frame layout, things are stacked on top of each other. Everything expands to the full size of the layout, every control that's in there, but they're stacked on top of each other. Okay. Um, that's, that's what a frame layout is. In a linear layout, There's two versions of a linear layout. One, you can have a vertical layout, and that way everything is arranged vertically, and it's purely vertical. Nothing can be horizontal. Nothing can be next to each other. It's all up and down. So that's vertical. Or we can have the layout in what we call a horizontal orientation, and that would be that way. So linear layout can either have a, a vertical orientation or a horizontal orientation. Okay. Does that make sense? All the, all the controls are always next to each other. No controls are ever over, overlapping. And the order that they appear is the order that they are in the XML. Okay. So if I have control A, B, and C in the XML in that order, they're going to appear that way visually. If I have them ABC, it's going to be from left to right. Does that make sense? Okay. So we want to change the layout container. We're going to do all of this through XML. Okay. So go back to the text view. Again, this is the basic layout. You can see up at the top, I have the constraint layout. Okay. I'm going to actually change this tag. This is the easiest way to change what the layout container is, is change this in text. Linear layout. So 
So I've changed the opening tag to linear layout. Make sure that you're still keeping this XMLS, uh, the XML namespace Android. Um, if you lose that, you're going to need to undo what you just did and, and put it back in there. Um, but make sure you still have that line. Because um, previously it was at the end here, which is why I moved it down. Okay. So does everybody have that? Show of hands. Everybody got switched over to linear lap. Okay. When you switch the starting tag, it should also switch to your ending tag automatically. Okay. So just verify that your ending tag has switched to. Okay. So now we're in a linear layout con container. What you will see is, first of all, your preview things look broken. Um, you'll also see that it looks like there's some errors on the actual code. Okay. So the first one here, we see that there's an error on the width. Um, so the way that the linear layout works, um, oh, I need to do one thing. Now that I've changed it to linear layout, I need to set the orientation. So the orientation, I want to be vertical. Okay, there we go. I'm going to use it vertical or horizontal. So that's going to say I'm going to have the controls up or down or, or left or right. So with a constraint layout, the zero dp mean, meant something special, right? What did what did zero dp, DP mean? Is it like density pixel? Uh, it was zero dp meant to match the constraint. Match the constraint, okay. Zero dp meant match constraint, okay. So with linear layout, I need to actually give it a different number because well, now I don't have constraints, right? So here with the linear layout, I'm going to actually change this to match parent or match the width of the parent, okay? So match parent says expand it to the full width or height of the parent. So wrap content should still be, sorry, the, the height should still be wrap content. The width should now be match parent. I need to do the same thing for all of these. The width now should be match parent. Okay. So I've changed them all to width parent. They now have the right width, but they don't necessarily have the right height. Okay. So notice in here that my label, my counter is not showing up, right? Why is it not showing up? Well, because I've told it that it's 0 dp. It has no height. Um, so I need to expand it, right? So let's start by just setting it to wrap content, just like I had with all the other controls, right? So now they're all appearing vertically. They're not being collapsed. You can see because I've set all their widths to match parent, they're being expanded. And because they're set to wrap content for their height, they're taking up however much height they need, right? Okay. Now, there are a few issues here. What's the first issue that you see? They're not in the order we want. They're not in the order we want. Dalton, did you have something else? I was just going to say there's lots of extra white space. There's lots of extra white space, yeah. So there's extra white space at the bottom. Okay. Well, let's pick the order first. Right? So if I'm going to fix the order, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole tag, I'm going to cut it, make sure you grab the whole thing, I'm going to do Control X, then go up between the two buttons, and I'm going to paste it. So I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to paste it. So again, that's Control X, and then Control V. Now they're in the right order. I would still recommend, even if you're not using a, um, uh, even if you're not using a linear layout, it's still probably good to kind of arrange them logically, um, just because that makes it easier to maintain the code in the long term if you kind of arrange them in the order that they appear on screen, even if you're using a constraint layout. The thing is, with constraint layout, it doesn't really matter what order they're in, um, but with linear layout, they definitely do. Okay. 
So we want to expand that now to take up the full height. Okay. So with a linear layout, um, we have one option for how we can change that. So one thing we can do with a linear layout, we can also set what's called a weight. Okay. So we've got the width, we've got the height. Uh, we also want to set out set the layout weight. So on the text view, I'm going to add another property. So we're going to set layout weight to a number. Okay. So what weight says is are you interest effectively are you interested in any leftover space okay so by default the weight of every element is zero they by default they have no weight okay so what happens is for all of the ones that have a weight that's not zero they get a portion of the leftover space they get a portion of the leftover white space does that make sense so there's left or right space, so they're going to get it. Yep. So that works like FlexPro. It does, and actually works exactly like FlexPro. Um, so, for instance, if I were to say, um, let's also set, you don't need to follow along with this, just watch what I do up here. So this is basically just FlexBox. Uh, it's not as strong, it's not as powerful as FlexBox, but it is similar. Um, Flexbox can actually do a lot more than this can. So if I set both of these to one, um, what I'm saying there is that both of them get an even share of the leftover space. Does that make sense? So for instance, if I were to say the buttons both have a weight of one, let me set the text to zero. So we've got one, zero, and one. That means whatever space is left over is going to be evenly shared by the buttons. Make sense? That's how the weight works. The thing you need to understand, though, um, weight is expensive. Um, as far as running things on a phone, it adds up. Okay. Um, the reason is, in order to do this weight, um, it requires two measure passes. And so the way that layout managers work in Android, it'll do a first pass over all the controls in the in the layout and say, how big do you need to be? I'll say, how big do you need to be? And then assuming there's no weight with a linear layout, it can just immediately say, okay, you get that weight. You get that size. Um, once you add a, a, a weight pass, effectively it has to kind of go through and do a second measurement now to apply that weight. So it's generally recommended that you avoid those, avoid doing a lot of weighting where you can. Obviously, in this case, this is something where I need the the control in the middle to have weight because I want it to expand. I'm not really I don't know. Okay. So so that's one of those things to so that's one of the things to be kind of wary of. You want to avoid having a lot of weights. And in general, if you are going to have a weight, only set one thing. Set one thing to one to take up the full space. That's kind of the cheapest way to do it. Also, constraint layout actually is a lot cheaper in general for anything that you would need a weight for. So usually if, if you're going to need to have something that's a non-zero weight, you might as well just go build it as a constraint layout because it's going to end up being cheaper. You haven't specified the orientation. I must have missed that thing. Yeah, you need to say Android orientation is vertical. And so what decide if you want to use so for what what would you need to what would you avoid? Constraint layout? Constraint layout. I would honestly recommend every app you use pretty much use work constraint layout exclusively at this point. Um, the two that we're talking about now, linear layout, frame layout. Well, linear layout and relative layout, both of these are actually older. Um, so the three original layouts that we had when Android originally launched, frame, linear, relative. These were there from the start. Um, the constraint layout is 
less than five years old, actually, at this point. It's a really new thing. Um, and actually, the whole point of constraint layout is to replace relative layout. Um, it's constraint layout is basically a better version of relative, actually. Um, it does everything the relative does, but better and cheaper on the hardware. And it grows a lot, but it does a lot better job of, of scaling to different display sizes. Does that make sense? So the reason the reason we have linear layout is there are still simple cases where it's just like, well, I just need to arrange them vertically, arrange them horizontally. Okay. So if you have purely just a horizontal row or a vertical row, it can be worth just using a linear layout. Okay. Um, the other thing that you will run into is there's at least one of the controls um, in the Android API. Uh, there's one built-in widget that already is a linear layout in and of itself. Okay, so that's why you kind of need to understand it a little bit, because that particular control is kind of has one baked in. That makes sense. So what we do primarily will be mostly constraint layout. I would I would say really at this point you can do any layout as a constraint layout, um, but sometimes it's uh, Sometimes, especially if you're working with an app that's been built previously, you'll see a lot of linear layouts. So does that make sense? So that's how we do it as a linear layout. So you've seen it as a constraint. You've seen it as linear. Now we're going to throw a curveball at you and do it in relative. Um, so let me make sure, though, we've covered everything here. So we've set those things to match parent of the elements, add the weight, okay, yeah, so we're at the end of that one. So now that we've got that working, real quickly, we're going to go through how to do this with a relative layout. So again, going up to the top, I'm going to change this from a linear layout to a relative layout. Okay, now relative layouts don't have an orientation. So I'm going to remove that. So again, two steps you want to do right now. Change it from a linear layout to relative, and then change the and then remove the orientation attribute. Orientation only applies to linear layouts. Okay. That should have also changed your end tag. So your end tag should now be relative and your start tag should be relative. Now, look at what's happened in the preview. You don't see it, but it's there. Uh, everything got pushed all the way to the top. Okay. Where it's all stacked on top of each other. Yeah. Okay. So when we're using a, a relative layout, okay, similar to how we have with the constraint layout, in constraint layout we have to specify how are things relative to and how are things connected to each other, right? So with constraint layout, I said, for instance, the even um, the toast button was connected to the top left and right of the camera. Okay. So I have to set the similar sort of constraints, sort of relations, with a relative layout. Okay. So with a relative layout, I need to now go back and do a similar thing to what we just had done with the constraint. Okay, so let's start at, at the top with the relative. So first of all, this button. Okay, we've got these constraints here, right? Well, those constraints only work as long as I'm actually using a constraint layout. Okay, so all three of those properties are now basically wrong, right? So what I need to put in now is the ones that actually work for a relative layout. So if I start with layout, you'll see it gives me a bunch of suggestions. So I'm going to say layout underscore. And then let's look at what we have here. So we've got several of these that say, well, align, right? 
So I'm going to say I want this connected, this toast button, I want it connected to the left, top, and right of the parent, right? So I'm going to say align parent top. We're going to set this to true. Android layout align parent start true. Android layout align parent end. Now, one of the things you'll notice in there, you see how there's a start and end, but there's also a left and right. Okay, so nowadays with newer versions with Android, always use start and end. Always use start and end. Um, what the reason for that is, the left and rights are an older version. They are a relic from before Android supported right to left languages. Okay, so as long as you're using start to end, it will flip correctly when you're doing Hebrew or Japanese. But if you do left or left and right, it doesn't flip correctly in right to left languages. Does that make sense? So we want to make sure we're using start and end and not left to right. If we were setting our minimum SDK version to an older version, let me go show you this real quick. Don't make this change. Um, but I want to just show you what it looks like. If I set, say, my minimum version down to 14 and sync it. Let's go look here. You're going to see some additional errors. So look here. See what it says? So if my minimum API is less than 17, um, then anytime I put a line parent start, I also have to say a line parent left. So it'll actually force me to do that. So if my if my minimum version here, let's do that. Alt, Alt Enter. It's going to force me to duplicate those things where I have both left and I have start. So if your minimum version is seven, is less than 17, that's what's going to force you into doing. Okay, but since we're running, since we're since we're running with a newer version, let me go back to 21. Sync now. It's actually going to change what that recommendation is. So now that I've switched it to 21 as my minimum, it's actually going to suggest not that I should add the left, but that I should remove it. So in this case, it says, oh, you don't need that anymore. So we can remove this here. So that's one of the things to know. You'll see things like that where if I have my API version set to one number, my minimum API version set to one number, it will give me one set of suggestions. If it's set to a higher number, it will give me potentially an even opposite set of suggestions. Is that okay? Okay, that's one thing to keep keep in mind. Especially if it in the future, let's say you're working on an app in the real in the real world, and you decide we're no longer going to support older versions of Android, right? If you move that minimum API version up, you have, may have more work to do to get things up to date because it immediately might tell you warnings or errors that it didn't tell you about earlier. Does that make sense? It may give you different suggestions than, than what it told you if your minimum was something different. Okay, so we need to align to the parent. That's on that button. Any guesses to what we need to do with the other button? Basically the same thing, right? So rather than being top, start, and end, the button on the bottom, the count button, is going to be bottom, start, and end. So we got a line parent bottom, a line parent start, a line parent end. Okay. 
Um, now I also need to constrain the control in the middle. So for the text view in the middle, I'm going to remove these constraints here. We still need to align this to the start and end of the parent because I still want to stretch it out horizontally. But I need to set it somehow to be underneath the top button and above the bottom bottom button. Does that make sense? It needs to be underneath toast and above count. Okay, so the way I do that here, I'm going to say again, layout. But instead of saying align parent, I'm going to say above or below. Okay, so let's start from the top. So I'm going to say this has to be below the toast button. <coughs> and above... the count button. There we go. So you can see we've recreated what we had in the beginning. So that, does that layout below automatically take in those margins that we had originally set on the constraint? Or we have it in the XML. So let's look at where those are. Oh, right. Margin, yeah. start, top, end, bottom. Yeah, so they're still there. Yeah. So it's still it's still using those margins we set previously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you compare that, if you compare what we had to do there, and you compare it to what we did with the constraint layout, you can actually see it's basically the same thing, mm -hmm. right? The difference is that I'm saying, you know, where is it aligned to? Is it below, below? The names of the properties change, and in some cases the values as well. Um, but it's basically this conceptually the same way. Um, the downside with relative layout is two things. Um, it uses a very, it uses a completely different algorithm for figuring out how to position things, which means it actually costs it actually costs a lot more in terms of processing time to lay things out in a relative actually takes longer than laying things out in a constraint. Um, and it also means that the, the way that the constraint works, it actually works better with animations as well as the other upside. Um, there's, because of the algorithm that's used to lay out a constraint, you kind of saw as we were moving things around, there are a lot of animations happening. Well, those, you get those same sort of animations if you ever need to change something on the device in terms of dimensions. Um, so it works, the constraint layout works really well for a lot of reasons. Um, and that's, so that's really what we'll be doing going forward, is we'll be doing almost entirely constraint. Down to the button? Okay, so the count button? So you can still use this, this this relative layout system. And again, if you're looking at apps that are out there in the field that have already been written, it's very likely that you'll run into ones that are using these linear layouts and these relative layouts. Okay, And some of the examples in this um, tutorial still use those. Um, but what I'm mostly going to recommend going forward is we're going to do nearly everything in a constraint layout. Does that make sense? At least you've seen you've seen what a relative layout looks like. It's pretty much it's very very similar to what you have. Um, the other thing is notice as we put these relative layout in, notice that I did that in text, right? I can use the designer for that. Um, the the one of the problems with that relative layout, the designer just doesn't work. <laughs> to be perfectly blunt, um, the designer is really a pain in pain in the butt to get to work with relative layouts, um, which is one of the reasons why you have constraint layout. So the constraint layout works really well on the designer. The relative layout, historically, when I was doing professional development and the only thing we had is relative and linear, I didn't even look at the design because it didn't, it wasn't really all that helpful. 
That makes sense. So so nowadays nowadays we we don't spend as much time in the text. We spend more time in the design system than we do in the text. It's actually made a big difference in that. So if you're working with relative. You mostly look at the text and not the designer. If you're working with constraint, I would definitely recommend use use the designer and not the text as much. Okay. That gets us to the end of lesson 1.2b. So again, we talked a little bit about constraint, more about constraint. We, you saw the linear layout, you saw the relative layout. We went through how to do different variations of your layout. And that works regardless of what layout mechanism you're using. So remember that there are th three different files, right? So we have the, the main file, we have the, um, the landscape file, we have that tablet file. Note that they're completely separate files. Well, that means that if I need to, I could say, well, for phones, let's use a linear layout, and for tablets, let's use a constraint. Um, so I can actually use a completely different layout engine depending on the device that's there. Does that make sense? So for instance, that means if something newer were to come out, there's a newer layout engine, well, then you can say, okay, we'll use that newer layout engine on newer devices and use constraint to relative on an, on an older device. That helps there too. For backwards compatibility. Okay. Um, you saw there's three different versions, there's three different ways to set a width and a height. What are my three options for widths and heights? Normally with a constraint layout. What are my three options? Huh? You said fixed? Yeah. Okay. So how would I maybe say I want a fixed? How would I write that? How would I write that in code? Okay. DP. DP. Remember DP. Um, because remember we do widths and heights in DP. We do font sizes in SP. So that also means things like padding Padding we do in SP because it's relative to really a font size. Padding we do in SP because it's relative to font size or line spacing um, would also be SP. Okay, so fixed. What's my other option? Uh, match, parent. match parent. Okay. Well, so one thing to know: match parent um, works in the other ones in match parent is a concept that works in uh, linear layouts, in relative layouts, and frame layouts. It doesn't, this one doesn't actually, is never used with constraint layouts. That's important to know. Okay, so that one says expand, but we never use that one ever when we're, we're dealing with constraints. Okay, and there's, there's a reason why that is, but I don't want to go into where we are there. But that has to do with how it does the algorithm. So fixed. Match pair, there's another two. Graham. Is it wrap? Wrap? No. Wrap content? Wrap content, yes. So wrap content is literally written as wrap content. Okay. What does wrap content do? It says only take up as much space as you need. Right? What's my what's my final option for how to set the width or the height? Remember we're working with constraint layout. What's that third option? No, we didn't say mass constraint. So match constraint which if we're writing that in the XML is actually written as zero DP. Okay. We're actually saying if we're saying match the constraints, 
that it has no width and height. So it actually means that it can scale it up to whatever it needs to be. And match parent typically starts the algorithm as saying, hey, I need the full screen width or hold the full, full width instead of starting by saying I need zero. Does that make sense? So match constraint starts with zero and works up. Match parent typically starts with the full size and works down. And it ends up that this is more efficient is to start at zero and work up. Let me go back to that. Um, so there is a homework assignment at the end of this lesson um, that I do want you to go through. It's going to ask you to do some things with the Hello Toast app. I'll let you do that on your own time. Um, please do this as, as you know, homework. Um, and there's also some homework questions in here as well, which I posted on the site as a, as a post. -it. But that's going to be your homework site, your your first homework assignment to take home and work on. That's 1.2b. So you'll, I want you to finish that on, finish that one at home. That's going to ask you to make some changes to this this app. All right. So why don't we go and commit what we have um, just to make sure we're at a good place here before we go switch over to another app because we're about to create another app. So we're keeping the relative layout? Um, up to you if you want to keep the relative layout or if you want to just undo and go back to the constraint. Um, but I believe that you'll need to be in this state for the homework, in the relative layout for the sake of the homework. You will need to be in relative layout? I believe so. I think that's where it's expecting you to be. Once you have that committed, we we'll move on to 1.3 because I want to try and get 1.3 and 1.4 done today. So on to 1.3. Again, Evan, please make sure you got your stuff committed at this point. Because we're going to start a new project. So this next chapter, um, we're going to talk about primarily about the text view widget. Um, on that, it says, do we make the project again? So we just copy the text view tray and make a new project. Do all that again. Yeah, you want to make a copy. Okay, so 1.3. We want to talk about the text view widget. Okay, 
So the text view widget is normally, you can basically think of it as a label. It's a way to display text. Um, one important thing to know in terms of the hierarchy of controls in Android, because what we learned here actually applies a little bit more broadly, some of these things. So in Android, we've got everything that we have is a view. All of our controls that we put on the interface are views, right? And that also breaks in, and then beneath that, we have things called view groups, right? So a view group is any control that contains other views, okay? Everything else is something that doesn't contain another view underneath it. So, for instance, under view group, you'll find frame layout. You'll find linear layout. You'll find your relative layout. And you'll find your you'll find relative layout. You'll find constraint layout. They're all view groups. Okay. You're also going to see one in here that we're going to talk about in one three. Is called a scroll view. In fact. When we get to this one, a scroll view is actually a subclass of frame layout. Because it can actually contain a view. Okay. So a scroll view is a subclass of a frame layout. Over here, we have the text view. Text view cannot contain other, other, other views. But what's maybe a little bit surprising is what other things are childs of text views. Okay, so far we've run into two different controls, right? We've run into text views and we've run into buttons, right? So a text view, remember, is anything that can show text. Does a button show text? No. Button does show text. So buttons are actually subclasses of text view in Android. So anything that can show text is descended from it? Yes. Anything that has text in it is a text view. So that includes buttons. That also includes text fields, which are edit text. So an edit text is, is a way you can have the user type in text or a text box. All three of these things are text views. That may be a little bit surprising but because that's not how most frameworks do things, right? Most things, labels and buttons are completely separate, right? But they're not in the case of Android. Does that make sense? So for so that's that's one thing to keep in mind. So especially as we're working through specifically in this lesson, we're going to be talking about text view. Recognize that some of these things do actually work with buttons and edit fields. Okay, so what we're going to cover here. So we're going to make a, an application called scrolling text. Um, we're going to be using the constraint layout. They, they do this with a relative layout, but we're going to be primarily just using the constraint layout. We will do a little bit with relative, sorry, with linear layout here. Actually, all of this can be done with linear layout. Um, then we'll deal with adding some text views. We're going to work with the text appearance a bit. We're going to look at line spacing. Um, we're, the end goal of all of this is we want to make basically an app that can show articles. Right? It's kind of an article reader. Okay? So we've got the app toolbar up top. And then beneath that, we've got the name of the article. And then beneath that, we've got some header text and the actual article. So that's kind of the overview of it. Um, you'll also see if you look really, if you're looking at this on your own screen, you'll see that there's links embedded in this text. Okay, so I've got links embedded, I've got some bold text, I've got some italics embedded in there, and then I can also scroll this up and down to get to all the text. So that's where we're going. Okay, all clear?
that's what we're trying to build. So let's go through and create this application. So I'm going to go back to Android Studio. I'm going to make a new application. So file, new project. We're going to start with an empty activity again. I'm going to call the application scrolling text. Um, you want to put this in your projects folder. So scrolling text. Um, again, I'm putting this as API 21 as my minimum. I'm going to hit finish. And close hello text. OK. So when this loads up, let's go into the layout and go to the design view, collapse that. Okay, so we're just looking at the layout. So like earlier, I'm going to go ahead and delete the text view that's already there. We don't need it because we're going to start fresh. I'm going to do this whole thing actually. The, the book says to use, the, the book and tutorial suggests to use a relative layout here. I'm just going to use a linear layout for this to keep it simple. Um, so to go back in here, I'm going to change this con from constraint layout to linear layout. So that's our starting point. We're just starting with an empty linear layout. Okay. Now let's go back to the designer. Um, and in fact, if I look at, oh, I need to put in my orientation here. So Android orientation. This is going to be a vertically oriented linear layout. Do you need an impact I don't. Remember, if I have this less th if I have that slash greater than that marks that there's no end tag so it'll add one automatically in a minute when I add more controls so I just trying to switch it over to I'm just trying to switch over to linear okay so we switch over to linear layout now we can start adding in some of the controls that we need so I'm first going to drag in one text view And we're going to set the properties of that. If you're following along, it'll be here on task one of 1.3. Here's a bunch of these set. So we want to go set the, yeah, I'm actually going to, I'll switch this over here and let you walk through that. So these are all the attributes you need to set on that first text view. And, and don't forget to set that ID. So the ID is going to be article heading. Article heading. It's got a background of primary color. So this is under 1.3. This is going to be 1.3 task 1, or lesson 1.3 task 1. Did you set the orientation? Yes, so I sent the orientation of the linear layout to vertical. <clears throat> Okay. 
white padding is ten DP. I uh, know the width should be should be um, match parent. Remember, zero DP would would be if it's a constraint layout. So this is just a linear layout. So article type. Should we set a string thing in the uh, resources? Mm -hmm. So once you set that, you kind of then look up at step seven, and yes, they're immediately going to tell you to go to the the text, and then go add that into the strings XML. So extract the resource, call it article title. It's going to go into strings XML. Once you've got that all there, you'll want to add another text view and kind of follow through here. Um, the other thing you want to do, we set that one important thing. Um, we set the padding to 10 dp. If I look here, so I've got the padding set to 10 dp. Just like I can add colors and I can add strings to those resource files. I, and link them. I can do the same thing with dimensions, which should be this 10 dp here. So I'm going to do Alt Enter. I'm going to say extract the dimension resource. So I extract the dimension resource, and I think they called this regular padding. Padding regular. Padding regular. There it is. So padding underscore regular. So rather than the padding being set here, and rather than us duplicating that same padding everywhere, I'm going to move it into a resource file here, which holds dimensions, holds dimensions. Um, and that way I use the word regular. If I need to change the padding, I can just change it one place rather than changing it everywhere. Similar to how the, the strings XML file works. So we extract those two things. We're going to then add a second text view to the layout. And, and we need to set those properties there as well.
editing. Subheading, subheading, as heading regular. Because we're not using a, because we're using a linear layout, not a relative layout, you won't set this layout below. That layout below is only for a relative layout on Writer. So you'll do all the others. Wait, we don't do that one? Okay. Yeah, you won't need to set that one because we're using a linear layout. Uh, right. This text appearance. Once you've created that one, you'll want to follow in the instructions right below as well, which is 10, which tells you go ahead and extract the text as a string resource called article subtitle. So you should have something like that so far. Just gonna check it. So this one should be just default plus default large. Yeah, I used to put 
So we've got the first two lines. Let's go to the next line. So the next one we want is actually the text. Or wait, no, is this one? So we got heading. Okay, so the third text view we're adding is called article. So this is going to actually be the, the text of the article. So I'm going to add in one more text view. And we're going to set the attributes as shown here. Same, same way as we just did the other two. So the ID of this one would be article. The text in here will be um, article text. So if you're at the same place, you should have something that looks like this, and your code should look like so. We don't need the line spacing extra. Oh, yeah, you want to add that in. I'll enter. That's going to be extract that to line spacing. Oh, yeah, I don't want to get on the 
Yeah. 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 So if you've got all that working, um, what you want to do is do a quick test on your device. Just make sure it's all, all good. If that's all, if that's fine, there's no errors, um, then go to in the, the next step in the uh, lesson. It'll show you where to get the resources for what text you want to put into the article. article. So you want to change the article title, the article subtitle, and the article Log and any article text to make sure it's all in that bucket. So the next thing is going to be the, the change the, the actual text then. Can you just go like Lauren Epson instead of opening any text file? Just follow it here. Just copy it that way. There's a link to it. Beatles, did you have Beatles Anthology Volume 1 of American Party? Yeah, I didn't plug it in earlier. Yeah, what, what I'm saying is that you can't no, do it. Did you put Anthology Hmm? Did you do that? I just copied it and pasted it. Because, oh, that's just do it too. For, uh, for XML, do you have to do like where you have to in HTML where you have to do like uh, ampersand and amp sort of? It only oh, you can't it. scroll in there. So if you look at what's there and open it, most people are going to have. So if I go to strings, because that's what I want to change, um, I'm following this link. Where is it? Here. Okay, so I want to set the title and the subtitle. Um, those two are fairly easy. I just copy and I just put what's there, there. And I'm going to keep those all on one line. Right, so if I got simple strings, I just keep those all in one line right there. So that's my title and my subtitle. Okay, now with the text, I want to actually put some formatting in there. Okay, so let's say I want to put line 
a, a few lines here. I want them kind of be separated by by separate lines. So I have A, B, C, right? I'd like those to be on separate lines. Um, but if I actually go look at the preview here, you'll see it's all still on one line. Okay. So similar to how we can break things up in uh, Java in the middle of a string, I'm going to put a slash n there. And that slash n, you see, is going to cause it to actually have a line break in there. So is that part of XML? So that's not part of XML. Okay. So the way that this reads this is kind of its own kind of language per se. Um, so you can do slash n for new lines. You can do slash quote for single quotes, slash double quote for double quotes. Um, but if I want to put in, make something, say, bold, I'm going to use the B tag. If I want to make something italic, I'm just going to use the I tag. So if you're pulling in the code from there, they'll all, from the art, from the, from the lesson, they've already got a bunch of B and I tags in there. So you're going to end up with something like that. It's a little bit, but it's not full HTML. In fact, the only tags it, it supports out of the box are B and I tags. That's it. Doesn't support any other tags. So anytime I've got an edit text and I want to have some of the text bolded, some of the italicized, I can do that through the strings XML file. <clears throat> So let's look quickly how that looks in the preview. Okay, so I can jump back here. And let's run, in fact, let me just run this on the on the emulator. So run that there. So on the emulator, you should be seeing something like this. And you'll notice, for instance, here, I've got text, text that is italicized. Um, but you'll also notice that I have no way to scroll up and down. Right? It's maybe a little bit more obvious if you're working on a physical device, but normally I could swipe up or down. Right? Who is at this point? Who's got this this much working? Okay, so we're waiting on Ben, waiting on Eston. Eston, where are you at? Putting the text in so? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> so to go through a few things on that text there, mention, mention that slash n is how we're going to separate lines, slash, slash single quote to escape single quotes, slash double quote to escape double quotes if you have them. Um, you're going to have the b tag, the certain n tags if you want to make something bold and the certain end tags for italic if you want something made to tag. There's no underline, there's no strike through, those are the only ones that are there. You can't change the size of the text, you can't change the color, none of those things are supported. Um, that's all you get. It's just B and I. And as they say here, all the other tags are ignored. So we ran it, we checked it, and you can look at the example code that they have there. Um, but we want to next change it in such a way that A, the links work, and B, we can actually scroll through it. Um, because for instance, if we look at here, you'll see this rockument.com right here. We'd like to, that to be a link, okay? Um, but unfortunately, there's no link tag in the syntax it supports. There's no anchor tag. Um, so the way we do that, I'm going to go to the text of this. I'm going to add another property. Android Autolink. And there's a few different options. So we're going to set it to web. And that's going to say any web address that it sees, any URL that it sees, it's going to turn that into a link, a clickable link. It will go to the web. You can also give it other options in there like phone. If it sees phone numbers, then it'll, then it'll make that into a link that you can click to call that person or an email address to send them an email, et cetera, et cetera. But right now we just want to make web links into any URLs that it sees as web links. So if I go back to the design view, you'll see it's already highlighted that as a link. And if I go to my app, if I go to my emulator, when I click on that link, it's going to take me over to Chrome. Now, if you haven't followed that link before, it's probably going to ask you to set up Chrome. And because you haven't set it up yet, so it's going to ask you to try to associate a, a Chrome account and stuff, you can just skip through that if you want to see how it works. You just say, hey, I don't want to set up an account, just skip all those things. But it'll open that up in Chrome. Get back, go back here. Um, and now we want, to, we want to rejigger this to allow that text view to scroll. Okay. Now, the control that we use to make that scrollable is a scroll view. Okay. Um, you can sometimes do this through drag and drop. I would recommend adding a scroll view. It's a lot easier though through the text view. So that's where I'm going to go do it. I'm going to go do it through the, sec the, the text view. 
So I'm going to go here. I'm going to add a scroll view and add it right before my, my final text view. We're going to set the size of it to match parent and wrap content for the moment. Now, inside of that scroll view, that's where I need to move this third text view. So I'm going to cut it, paste it into here. Okay. So now that text view, my article text, is contained in the scroll view. As I kind of mentioned earlier, a scroll view is a subclass of frame layout. So it can but it only ever holds one view. It only ever holds one view. And whatever is inside of there, that's what now becomes scrollable. Whatever you put inside of a scroll view becomes scrollable. Now, one important rule for putting things inside of a scroll view. If you're putting something inside a scroll view, the width of that should always be match parent. Okay? That says I want it to expand to the full width of the scroll view. Okay. You also want to make the, sure the height of that should also always be wrap content, both of what it is. Um, the thing to know, again, no other values will work. If you put something inside of a, a scroll view, the width and height has to be that. If it's anything other, it will break. It will not work the way you want it to. Is that clear? Um, the scroll view will not work properly if those two things aren't set that way. Okay. So we've got that in there, um, and simply by doing that, let's see if I can run this now. All right, now I've got text that I can scroll. Yay! Now, also technically to be perfectly proper, because the scroll view should take up all the leftover space in the linear layout, I should actually be saying that this should have a weight of 1. So my scroll view has a weight of 1. Wait, why did you do that again? To make sure that it's taking up all the leftover space. Oh, right. right. So I've got some space reserved for my, my heading and then my subheading. And then my scroll view is taking up all the space beneath that that's left over. Okay. So that's how we can get text that scrolls, right? So anything that's within anything that's within a scroll view is scrollable. Right? Now, if I had two scroll views on the page, that means they're going to be kind of separately scrolling. So this. If I have scroll view on this half and scroll view on the other half, I can separately scroll those two sections. Um, so sometimes, though, however, I want to take some additional things and put them inside of a scroll view. So, for instance, what I'm going to do now, I want to actually take my subheading and put it inside the scroll view so it scrolls along with the text. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So my my title's going to stay in my my heading's going to stay in position, but my subheading is going to be now, let's say I move, I just move it inside with the text that we already have. Okay. Problem is, as I said earlier, scroll view can really only have one child. Okay. Only really have one child. And as I said, with frame layouts, they're stacked on top. Whatever children they have are stacked on top of each other. Okay. So there's a trick with the with the scroll view. I want to put things in the scroll view, and I want to have them be vertical. Huh? I need another. Yes, I need another view group. What kind of view group would be good? I want to have this thing above that. Huh? A linear. A linear layout. So in order to make this work. I actually put another layer in between. I put a layer of a linear layout in between the scroll view and the text views to allow that to happen. Okay. So in here, wrapped around that, 
let's add a linear layout. It's going to be match parent wrap content. So it's going to start there and be wrapped around those two text views. Oh, and I need to set the orientation of that. So Android orientation is vertical. Cool. So I've got a scroll view, and then inside of that is my linear layout. Side of that layout are those two things. So that's the way that you can put more things than just one into a scroll view, is you use a layout to contain them. So once you get all that in, go ahead and test it on the phone. Let me see it once you get it up and running. Yeah. Did you want um, a relative or a linear what type of constraint layout? So which which homework are we talking about? Was, um, I think it was one point two per key. Can we just use constraint then? Let me go look at one point two B. So homework one point two B. Um, it's saying yeah. Yeah. So where are you seeing I was relative? Yeah, so if you would do that with a constraint layout, okay. so they're asking you to make it look like you see you've got the kind of final project that they're mm -hmm. they're showing here. So so take what we started with the 
um, hello toast and, and convert it into that. And yeah, use a constraint layout is what I would expect. Uh, so ideally, this should work on any device. Okay. So actually, what I would say this should work anywhere from a four inch up to a 10 inch. So actually remove the other variations. So remove the landscape and the um, the tablet variations. So there should only have one variation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, one thing you'll need to know for that in terms of removing variations, um, if you go and try to remove a single variation from here, from this view, it will actually remove all of the groups of variations. Yeah. Brandon, did you hear that? If you delete a, a, a variant here, if you delete a layout here, whether it's you're just trying to delete the landscape or the tablet version, if you delete it, it's going to delete the whole group. Okay. So you don't want to delete a variant from this view. Okay. It's not what you want. What you want to do is go over to project. And if we look under here, app source, main, res, then we're going to get into layout. Actually, let me go open up the other project because this one only has one. You're not going to see it. So, again, I'm going to go to project here and dig down source, main, res, there's the layout. Okay, so if I'm looking at it in this project view, you see how the three, how the files are arranged. So one of them is in the layout folder, one is in layout dash land, and one is in layout dash layout dash SW600, right? Um, if I go through this route, then I can delete just a single layout and not delete the entire group. That makes sense. So if you ever need to delete a variant, do it through this view. Don't do it through the Android view. Otherwise, you'll lose everything. And no, there's not an undo button. I hope you haven't checked into source control. <laughs> so before you delete this, regardless of what route you go through, really, really check it into source control just in case it wasn't the right way. Um, because if it's, if it's gone, it's gone. There's no way back. There's no undo button for that. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a quick break. Um, come back at 3.55. Yeah, so 1.2b, let me go to 1.3. So to review what we've gone through so far, so we spent um, some time working with the text view, throwing a few text views on there. We looked at scroll view, we looked at linear layouts, um, we've looked at how to put some sort of free form, some, some more text into that text view, add some bolding, set, add some italics, make some link, working links. Um, as well as you saw how to do, if you want spaces in your, if you want line breaks in your text, you're going to have to put that slash n character into the strings XML. Okay, so let's go over to 1.4, and this is kind of the last part of lesson one. Yeah. So we probably won't go through all of this today, but we want to start with this. So the next thing we want to look at is how do we change the icon for our apps? Um, that's a pretty common piece. So let's go through how to change the icon. Um, and ideally we want to end up with kind of an icon like this, maybe, is what we're going to look at. 
um, because so far all the app we've created they've just been this default default icon which doesn't really look real good and then if you've got if you've got that on your app on your phone it's like well what's that app for delete um, so you definitely want to make sure you make a custom icon for for your apps now let me go into Android studio I'm gonna actually reopen that hello toast project we had a we had, we were working on previously And really, you can do this on any project, but that's the one I'm going to work with. So once it loads up, let's look real briefly, real briefly what's already there. So if I look in the manifest, you can see that I'm linked up to an icon. My icon is set to mitmap slash IC launcher. My round icon is mitmap IC launcher round. See that? So what I'm saying, similar to if I have that at mitmap, well, where is that? If I look in my resource, you'll see that there's a mitmap folder, right? In fact, if I expand that, you'll see there's IC launcher and IC launcher round. In fact, there's a bunch of different versions of that icon um, because in order for your icons to look good on different screen sizes, we actually have to have a whole bunch of different resolutions of that icon. So we have all the way from here at high DPI going all the way to extra, 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 extra high DPI, right? So there's all these six variations that it will automatically switch through depending on what the DPI of the, the device is, okay? So when we make our icons, we also have to generate all those versions, right? We have to make all those 12 versions in order to have an icon for our app. Okay. Good news is we typically don't have to make those ourselves as long as we use some tools. Um, but if I were to make this icon in Photoshop, I would literally have to make 12 icon files. Yes. So is this the one that shows up on the Play Store? Yeah. Well, it's it's the one that shows up on the Play Store will be generated through what we're about to do. Um, but these 12 are actually just for phones, just for phones and tablets. This is not even including the one for the Play Store. So you can't just use an SVG? You can't. No. You have to use a bunch of PNGs. That would make it easier to overwrite? You can start with an SVG. And I, if you're going to make your own icon, you should definitely start with an SVG and then export it as a bunch of PNGs. And that's that's basically what happens. Is We start with an SVG and we export it into those 12 different versions. Okay. So I'm going to go on to the... Java folder, if I remember, I need to right click the, okay, we'll come back to that. So I'm going to right click the, right click res, right click res. So I'm going to right click on res and we're going to say new image asset. Okay, right click on the res folder and say new image asset. What you're going to get is this nice dialog here. Um, and in fact, this is going to do a whole lot of the work for us to, if we want just a very simple icon. Okay. Um, again, if we want to make our own custom icon, we need to go into Illustrator or something uh, or Illustrator or Photoshop and, and work with it, preferably Illustrator, um, and, and create that. Now, it should have already default to say, hey, I want a new la launcher icon. It says adaptive and legacy. Adaptive is the newer sort of icon format legacy is the older icon format okay so we're going to tell it to create all the launcher icons we want we're going to call them ic launcher that's what you want the name of the file to be it should always be ic launcher um, so as you can see on the right there's kind of a preview of the different versions so right now i'm previewing it in extra high extra high dpi i can change those different versions and you can see the higher the DPI, the more pixels it has to have, right? So let me go back to high DPI. So as we go through, you know, that, that DPI is going to change how many pixels are there. Um, so first on the foreground layer, 
um, I can pick a few different things. So the first thing I can do is I can say I want to take an image file that I already have, which is what you would do if you were picking image here. But we're going to pick clip art because we're going to pick from some of the icons that already exist. So go ahead and click, click pick art, clip art, and then click on this button here. We're going to get a pop-up and we're going to get a bunch of different icons that are already provided. Any of these icons here can be freely used. Um, you don't have to contact the designer. You can just use these. They're royalty-free. They're royalty-free. Yeah. So I'm going to follow along, following along with the tutorial. I'm going to look for mood, and I'm going to pick that icon. Mm -hmm. Now, if I wanted to change the color of that icon, I could go right in here. I'm going to put in my hex code as FF, FF, FF make it white so I can I can pick any of those clip art icons that are already there um, and I can change the color of it okay so that's on the foreground layer okay now on the background layer you can see that it's got that kind of bluish green grid we want to change that as well so I'm going to go back I'm going to go over to the background layer tab and you can see this is going to call this layer I see launcher foreground I see launcher background We'll see that in a minute when it finishes creating these. Um, so what I'm what is set to right now is to use this particular image as the background. I'm going to switch it over to color, so it's just a solid color, and then we can go through a color wheel and pick any color we want. So I'm going to pick kind of a maybe a darker green. Now I've done white. There. So just like that, I now have whole set of icons right and I can kind of see a preview of the different versions so you've got a square uh, uh, sorry a circle you've got a square you've got icons in between it's going to generate all those versions for us okay so once we set the foreground and the background let's go look at the legacy tab and you're going to see a few options here okay so you can say yes or no. Do you want to have those older versions? Do you want to have support for those older things? So in the this legacy icon is going to be used for versions of Android that are less than 25. Below 25, we're going to use that. And remember, we're targeting API 21, which means like Android 5.0 is going to use this leg legacy. Okay. And then this this one here, round icon, only used for API 25. Um, so we've got only for less than 25, only for 25, and then we're, it's actually going to generate another version that's after 25. Um, and then finally, you're asking about Play Store icon, that's right here. So you can see the Play Store icon is going to be this nice big one in the bottom right. That's what we're actually going to be using, for, that was what we use for the Play Store. So it gives you all those versions. Um, now, if I wanted to have a different, say, shape, Right? I could have a different shape for some of these legacy or, or other icons. Okay. So let's hit next on that. Now, one note, you see how this says? You see this, this warning at the bottom? It says an icon with the same name already exists and will be over it. So you remember when you saw that we already had that placeholder icon. That's okay. We're going to say go ahead and overwrite it because we don't need that placeholder icon. So this is going to overwrite those existing files. Okay. Which is where you're going to kind of see on this next screen, it's going to say, um, I'm going to override what's already there. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit finish. Okay. It's going to ask us if we want to add these files to version control. And yes, we absolutely do. So say add. And yes, we want to add those files. Okay. So now if we go looking through what's in the MIPMAP folder, you'll see that there's a bunch of new files. So for the lower, for there's got a PNG for all these different DPIs. And then you see it says any DPI version is 26. So after 26, it's going to use this what's called an adaptive icon. 
right? So it's an adaptive, it's an XML file, adaptive icon. It's got a background here. Background is color, IC launcher background. And it's got a foreground, which is this IC launcher foreground. See that? So it's it's defined in XML instead of defined as a PNG file. Okay. So color IC launch, let's look at the and if I look at round, it's the same thing. IC launcher background, IC launcher foreground. Um, if I go look at the let's find those two things. So first of all, under the val under the values file, values folder, you'll see that there's this color resource. Um, it actually did not create this exactly correctly, so I need to actually move this color into colors XML. So I'm going to take that out of IC Launcher background and put it into um, colors.xml. That's going to get rid of some of the errors that it has. Yeah. Just erase the other XML file. Because all our colors basically need to be into in this colors XML. Okay. So my eyes for my background, I just have a simple solid color. That's it. If I ever wanted to change the background color from my guy, I've got one place to change it. Um, if I want to go and look at the foreground, let's look under drawable. Okay. So under drawable, there's this IC launcher foreground. It's actually an XML file. So because I went through and made the created this as clip art, it actually has basically created something similar to an SVG. But it only will use that SVG for versions of Android 26 or later. Does that make sense? So for 25 and earlier, it's all using PNGs. For 26 and later, it's now using XML. So does that make sense? Yeah. So yes, Google finally realized that that was a problem, that we should not be creating so many different versions of our icons. But that only works for, for newer versions of Android. Like yeah, so it should be IC Launcher Background is the name of it, and it should be whatever you put in the editor. So your color may be different than my color. Yeah. All right, so let's run this on the device. Actually, I want to run this on the on the phone, not the tablet. So our app doesn't really look any different, um, but if I go to here, wait a second, something's not right. Notice my icon's not quite right. So it's picked up my background, but notice it's not quite picked up the correct foreground. Okay, now there's a little bug, it's easy to fix. Um, when it created this, it didn't delete the old file. So this old file that we have here um, in the drawable folder, there's an IC launcher background file that I need to delete. Um, and usually you can see a preview of that, but it's not showing. Or here it is. It's over here. So there's a preview of that. I need to delete that. Okay. Um, when you delete this, make sure you uncheck Safe Delete. Uncheck Safe Delete. Huh? Yeah. Make sure you uncheck Safe Delete. So we're going to delete the old version there. Also, if I look at foreground, I'm going to see that there's these two versions, right? So I've got the new one, and I've got the old one. So I also need to delete that one. Again, making sure I don't check safe delete. I want to be not safe. Okay, so if you deleted those old files under drawable, 
Hopefully we'll get the right icon this time. There we go. So that's what you should have. Is I got my new icon with my new background. Anybody still having issues with that, or do you got it now? Wait. So what do we uncheck on the delete? Unsafe. Or sorry, safe. Uncheck safe. <laughs> That's fine. No big deal. It'll work fine on either. I mean, you know. I'm gonna find one of you that you just not. So this is. I will search long and hard just so you know. Okay, so that's task one on one four. <laughs> you don't want to do that. I'll have to look at how. I'll have to. I always do the CPS plan thing. What do you hide? No, I haven't. I didn't even see the first two. They're both on, I think they're both on Netflix. So. Yeah. I saw the previous story. It was so they, they look really funny. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. Like when the dude like breaks his car and he's like, Oh my wife's calling. She always she always she always knows. <laughs>
I think that's about as much time we've got today. So the, the, the only thing that you worked on over overnight, finish up the homework for one P. That's that's your homework. And then we'll come back to it. We'll finish up one four and then we'll go over some three and stuff tomorrow. And then we'll hit lesson two on the next one. Thank <laughs> you. 